I'm gonna show you how to add realistic handheld camera shake to your footage. Whoa, whoa, dude, no, I said realistic. Subtle, yeah, there you go. Okay, and then how to combine that with some camera movement in DaVinci Resolve. And when I say realistic, I mean that when it's fast movement, there should be some motion blur. So I'm also gonna show you how to add that motion blur. And you can do everything I'm gonna show you in the free version of DaVinci Resolve. Let's start with camera movement. A slow zoom or a fast pan, it doesn't matter. It's super easy and I'll show you two different ways to do it. The first method is basic, fast and easy. The second method is not so basic because it'll allow you to make it look more realistic, but it's still fast and easy. Now, why would you even wanna add camera shake and camera movement? Well, because maybe you're filming yourself with a camera on a tripod, but then later you want it to look like it was shot handheld. So that's when you add fake camera shake and fake camera movement in post. But anyway, let's start with the most simple camera movement of them all, a slow intense zoom. And a slow zoom adds drama. You can see it here, right? Now, the first method is in the edit page, select your clip, Put the playhead where you want the zoom to start. Then open the inspector window here and create a keyframe for zoom and position. A red diamond means that you've created a keyframe and that keyframes are active now. Then move the playhead to where you want the zoom to end. Let's say here somewhere. And now just zoom in here. So make your image bigger. And see, it automatically creates a new keyframe here because the diamond turns red. And of course, you can also adjust the position. If you don't want to mess around in the inspector, then you can also go here, hit transform, and now you can just move the image around with your mouse. And DaVinci Resolve will also here automatically create a keyframe once you start moving or scaling the image. But the first keyframe, you always have to create manually. Now, let's see what this looks like. It looks like a slow zoom, perfect. And when you hit this icon right here on your clip, you can see where the keyframes are and you can move them around. So for example, you can make the zoom go faster by moving the keyframes closer together. Okay, easy peasy, right? But now let me show you the second method, but instead of doing a slow zoom, we're gonna do a fast pan. And because it's a fast pan, we're gonna have to add motion blur. It's gonna look something like this. Yeah, like that. In the edit page, select your clip, put the playhead over the clip and then go to the fusion page. Select the media in node here and then add a transform node. That's this icon right here. And now it works exactly the same as the first method, but we can make it look more realistic. So put the playhead here where you want the pan to start. And just like before, create a keyframe for center and size, which is basically position and zoom. Then zoom in and position the image all the way to the left. Move the playhead to where you want the pan to end and move the image to the right. Again, this will automatically create a keyframe. And now we have a fast pan. And of course, you can combine zooms and pans, even rotation, whatever you want. The problem now is that it's a fast pan, which means that there should be some motion blur, but there isn't. So we have to add some. It's super easy, just go to settings here and then there it is, motion blur. Take the box and now you can even tweak the settings a little bit and you're done. And what you can also do here to make it look even more realistic is to smoothen out the movement. Because right now, when the pan starts, the speed of the pan goes from zero to 100 in, in like milliseconds, instantly. But it doesn't look realistic, you want to ease into that movement a little bit. You know what I mean? Now, how can you do that? Well, just open the splines here, tick all the boxes, and now you can see here a visual representation of the keyframes. So this right here is the pan. It starts here and then whoop, and here's the end of the pan. To smoothen it out, just select the points where the pan starts and ends and hit S. There, it instantly smoothens out the movement. And of course, you can tweak it manually if you'd want. Okay, and now you have your zooms and pans, whatever. Let's combine those with some camera shake. This example is a slow zoom with some subtle camera shake. Okay, first I'll show you how to do it in the edit page real quick. Go to effects here, find camera shake and just drop it onto your clip. 
and then start tweaking the settings because the default settings look like poop. Bring down the motion scale and the speed scale. Let's also adjust the shake levels maybe, a bit more pan. And here's some more randomness scale. That looks a lot better already. You can even add motion blur because it will only show the motion blur when the movement of the image is fast enough. And the easiest way to learn what all these settings do, just put your clip on repeat here and start moving the sliders to see what they do. Now, how do you decide how much shake you should add? Well, you could let the focal length of the lens you shot the footage with guide you. Because footage shot with a long focal length will usually shake more than footage shot with a wide focal length. So 100mm add more shake than when you shot it with a 24mm. Also, an action scene or a very dynamic scene could do with a little bit more shake. And now let me show you how to do it in the Fusion page. This is my transform node from before. So that's where you create your zooms and pans. Then just hit shift plus spacebar and find the camera shake. And just add a node. And same thing now. Here you can tweak all the settings of the shake. And of course you can also create keyframes to make it look even more realistic. You can ease into the movement or ease it out. And that's about it. The key here is to always tweak the settings yourself because the default settings it looks like poop. And keep it subtle. Don't overdo it unless the footage or the story asks for it. And that's it. Thank you so much for watching and see you in the next one.